good morning uh, myself i am uh, dr sunil kumar bs uh, in fact uh, i am the, the professor and uh, dean academics in gm institute of technology also i am looking after the the information science and engineering department in uh, gm institute of technology davanagere uh, indeed i am uh, uh, very grateful uh, to the, the video for having given me an opportunity to teach uh, uh, two chapters in the uh, computer network subject it's me it's my uh, passion and uh, it's my love to uh, teach this subject because i love this subject very much uh, i have been taught this subject from long time uh, almost uh, eight to 10 times i might have uh, uh, taught this subject so i am uh, I'm uh, very confident that uh, I will be able to convince you the subject in a better way. And at the same time, uh, I think it's a time for every time when I teach the subject, I believe it is the, the learning process for me also. And I believe uh, in that interaction with uh, the students, I will also be learning much from this uh, complete uh, tenure of uh, a discussion of this subject. So now without wasting much time, I will move on to the subject discussion, module uh, four and five uh, to discuss on this. The module uh, four is basically on the, the multimedia networking. Uh, I think all of you are knowing that multimedia, the moment uh, we talk about the multimedia, uh, it is uh, the area where uh, the multiple uh, components are considered in the um, system. For example, uh, the data in different forms is used like uh, the video, audio, text, voice, everything comes into picture. So that's the reason handling this multimedia is one of the great challenge in the network because when you uh, push the, the data, multimedia data in the network, the challenge for you is most of the time it has to run in a real time. When you run it in a real time, definitely uh, the difficulties in the network should not hamper the, the real time processing. So in order to learn what are the, the challenges in the networking system, and uh, how exactly we can overcome these uh, uh, issues in the networking, we will discuss much in this uh, uh, chapter. Uh, I must be thankful to Jim Kuros and Keith Ross. These two are the, the authors uh, who have written the, the, this particular textbook. It is basically a top-down approach. The, uh, the meaning of this uh, top-down approach is that uh, you know, most of the, the subjects, they will be uh, explaining you the computer networks from bottom most uh, layer to the top, but it is not like that. So from the top layer, uh, I think if you lo look into OSI model, the top layer is the application layer. And then comes the, the network layer, and uh, of course, uh, host to network layer, and also the physical layer. So this is how they will uh, uh, discuss in this and hence uh, it is quite different from the, the regular uh, uh, method of study. And it is interesting also. Uh, uh, I think the PPT is what designed by them is more appropriate to teach this subject. And uh, probably I will be uh, putting some uh, small writing or write up on the, the slides uh, which you can see later. So that's why I will be using the, the PPT of this one. This uh, multimedia networking we will be discussing on uh, the basic applications of uh, multimedia networking. And of course, uh, the very important concept, streaming stored video, voice over uh, internet protocol, protocols for real time conversational applications and network support for multimedia. I think uh, you need to understand from the, the application point of view to the concepts and also you will be learning how the network support for the multimedia. Area. 
Right. Let us uh, go with the the first uh, topic that is uh, multimedia networking applications. I think, as you know, uh, in data communications, most of you have learned uh, uh, one of the the basic uh, uh, representations of various data. Data will be represented in uh, uh, text form in the num new numbers, and it might be in the um, video form or it is in the audio form. Uh, sometimes even the images are also considered. Now the question here is how you represent this audio, video and the images in a, a digital media so that the transmission of this data in the network <clears throat> would be more appropriate. So that's the, the basic uh, uh, discussion here. So let us take the, the audio uh, transmission in the multimedia. Uh, basically, the analog uh, uh, audio signal is uh, being used. And of course, uh, <clears throat> just a minute. Yeah, uh, I think uh, <clears throat> let me continue with this uh, discussion. Uh, the audio signal uh, is basically in the analog forum. <clears throat> it is very important you to understand that uh, the audio is read by the, the mic and the mic will be reading the, the uh, sound waves and it will be an analog signal when it is converted into uh, electromagnetic waves. So this analog signal will be an audio signal as an input. And uh, this most of the time when we either we used to store it or to make it transmitted to the other side, we have to convert it into the digital form. How exactly we convert that into digital form? Uh, as you know, there is a, a technique called PCM, Pulse Code Modulation. So this is one which will convert from analog to digital. Okay, so the conversion from analog to digital is formed by means of PCM technique. So the same is done here. For that, uh, we have three basic steps. The first step is sampling. The data is supposed to be sampled. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, here uh, they have taken an example of uh, telephone audio signal. Usually the telephone audio signal will work at a frequency of 4 kilohertz. And hence uh, the minimum sample rate that is required is 8000 samples per second. Can you anybody tell me why 8000 sa samples per second? The reason is Nyquist theorem. As we know that uh, Nyquist theorem says that uh, the minimum frequency uh, sample rate should be twice that of the maximum frequency. Here the maximum frequency is 4 kilohertz. So 2 into 4 kilo means into 10 to the power 3 that leads to 8000 samples per second. Okay, so this is how exactly we get these 8000 samples. And you know, when you used to store it in the CD, so the sample rate will be so high. Okay, it is about 44,100 samples per second it will read. So once you prepare this analog signal into the, the digital form, then you can effectively store that in the, the CD. Each sample is quantized and rounded to the, the 8 bits. Basically, the one SIM sample is converted into 8 bit. So what are the, the possible quantization sizes? So the quantization size is 256 different levels can be recognized by 8 bit. So it means that a very small uh, 1 divided by 256 is the, the smallest uh, time period for which you can read the, the sample and hence <coughs> the accuracy is better in this case. So such a quantized uh, value is represented by bits and uh, these uh, uh, quantized values are represented in the, the digital form. Here in the figure you can see that this is the, the analog audio signal. Okay. Uh, and hence it is being quantized like this. Okay. 
so this uh, uh, is the, the uh, resulting data when it is uh, being uh, captured in the system. Next, uh, you can see that uh, there will be always uh, a quantization error uh, for the basic reason that you can see that uh, any quantization will uh, uh, take only discriminate value. Discrimination means, so over a small period, there will be a gap. And this gap will lead to the, the error, it will uh, introduce an error in the, the data that has been read, okay? So this error is called as quantization error. The quantization error is more if the sample rate is less, okay? So quantization error is inversely proportional to the number of samples. More the sample, less is the error. Less the sample, more is the error, okay? So that's the reason uh, in order to uh, achieve the, the original signal, when it is decoded, it is always necessary for us to go for more number of samples, but uh, the, it is again a trade-off. It all depends on what quant quality of uh, uh, signal you are expecting on the other side. So with this, uh, uh, we can uh, discuss about the, how exactly the bits are generated and uh, how many bits are generated and how it will be used. You can see here, uh, in this example, uh, 8,000 uh, samples are being read and uh, uh, this leads to uh, 256 uh, different quantized values that will be re resulting in 64,000 bits per second. So, so many bits are generated in one second. So, the receiver will uh, convert it back into the, the analog form and it is, uh, it is called decoding. Okay, the process is called decoding. So, in the decoding, there will always be degrade in the quality, which is slightly lesser than that of the original analog signal. And uh, of course, it all depends on the how many samples you read. Now, uh, uh, the, the storing operation, you can see that uh, the CD has a capacity of uh, 1.411 Mbps. And of course, uh, the rate at which you can store the, the audio signal in the different uh, uh, coding forms. MP3 is one of the, the coding techniques that are being, that is being used very effectively to compress the audio signal and to store in the, the storing devices like uh, CDs, compact disc. You can see at a different speed it can store, 96 is uh, one possibility, 128 or 160 kbps. So internet uh, telephony is uh, another kind uh, wherein uh, it will be uh, giving the, the data at the rate of uh, 5.3 kilobits per second. Let us come to the, the video. Uh, again, uh, when you talk about the, the video, uh, video is basically a, a, a number of uh, uh, images will form the, the video. Uh, I must be knowing that uh, uh, this is uh, uh, can, this can be understood very easily by uh, every one of you uh, because you must be must have uh, seen the, the uh, movie Tare Jamin Pa, wherein the boy used to uh, scroll the, the images that are uh, uh, picturized in the the small book so that uh, when he uh, runs the, the images. Uh, it shows that how the boy is going away from his family, okay? So the movement is visible only when you have the, the similar kind of images moved faster. So it means that multiple images forms the video and these images are run at a particular speed to make it more natural and, and uh, proper uh, motion of the, the video. Let us see that one, uh, uh, basically video is called a sequence of image. That's what I was told you. Number of uh, uh, images or sometimes these images are also called as frames. Okay, 
number of frames per second fps is the the rating we say the standard rating is 30 30 frames per second if you do probably you can uh, see the image uh, video in a very appropriate motion or to the natural motion i think earlier you might have seen the, the gandhi ji's uh, video wherein uh, the video will be little faster than what the natural uh, movement of the, the people it's uh, it's because there they were uh, uh, able to capture the the image and run back at uh, lesser than 30 frames it might be 18 frames per second or it might be 24 frames per second mm. more near to the the 30 it will be natural movement can be seen that so that's how exactly the video is formed okay so the digital uh, video how the video can be converted into the digital form basically we will uh, read each of the, the frame as one image and this image will have the x and y axis data okay it is a matrix data okay there there are number of uh, uh, values in this okay these each value will represent one pixel okay so it will represent one pixel and uh, this is how we can represent one image so obviously video becomes the multiple copies of the image so number of uh, such matrices are formed and they are processed it may look little uh, difficult to understand that uh, see if there are 30 frames it means that 30 images run in one second and 30 different such uh, matrices are supposed to be used okay so which is a very tedious uh, thing and of course uh, the data becomes very huge okay uh, that is what is the, the basic feel of uh, everyone but here there is a technique so the technique here is how exactly we decrease the number of bits of uh, encoding the, the image and reduce the, the size of this matrix size means number of active points are reduced very effectively so for that uh, we will use uh, two uh, different uh, ways of uh, operation one is spatial operation another one is temporal what do you mean by spatial spatial means within the image within this image uh, if you uh, make the, the compression then it is called spatial for example you just separate this part upper part okay this part of the the image here you can see that if you see this uh, small portion is compared with this small portion both are having the same uh, yeah, quality of uh, what the colors so the colors is color is same it means that this if you store only this part and you replicate everything here from here to here that becomes the same color and you need not store all this area rather you store only this area and make a, a re replication of this when it is received on the other side up to this part so that that can be reformed it means that storing a small part and uh, generating the, the the majority of the, the image will reduce the, the amount of bits that are required to store this image so the same uh, kind of process goes from uh, top to bottom and it is called spatial compression the compression is made in the spatial area spatial means uh, in the x and y coordinate any image will give us x and y coordinate but there are opportunities or the the uh, more amount of compression is possible in the video because of its very nature uh, you know the video is formed by number of images so we say it is the, the third dimension number of images or in the the third dimension okay so when you have the, the comparison from one image to the another image that becomes temporal okay that becomes temporal because on the time axis 
we are considering the <coughs> different frames that are generated. Now, what we do in this case to make more compression is, see, one uh, the different frames will be compared to each other. For example, this frame is compared with the next frame because we told that 30 images are captured in one second. So the difference between one image to the another image in that will be very, very less. Probably you can see uh, the best example I can see you, I can tell you is that, uh, you know, when uh, the news reader is reading, hardly they will do a very minimal movement. For example, uh, they will be reading like that. Most of the time their lips movement will be there and eyelid movements you can see. Sometimes the other part of the, the uh, face can also be changed. So it means that uh, when such a, a, a change takes place, only that part has supposed to be encoded and the remaining background and the other part of the, the face and the body, what is visible in the image can remain the same. So in that case, uh, definitely what we can do is in the next images, we will be encoding only the portion that is being changed and hence we say that so this portion of uh, 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 image we will be encoded the rest will be mapped to the previous image okay like that so number of images only the area which is being changed or the change from one image to another image happens that will be go on changing the rest part remains to be the, the original. So that is why the original image is called I. I means information. Further, we will develop the, the images by means of PPP, predictions. Okay, how, what is the, the change from here to here that has been identified and uh, this can be developed by the prediction of with the I. Then there will be B is another frame that we used to encode and it is called bidirectional. So it may be compared with the previous and also the next image. So the time the comparison becomes easier. So this is how exactly we do the, the comparisons and hence uh, uh, the video compression will be very, very high when it comes to the, the temporal, okay? So you can see that uh, the spatial uh, coding will reduce to some extent uh, and when you do the, the uh, what the uh, temporal uh, uh, encoding then the compression will be very high and hence the number of bits that are required to encode the video will be reduced to a great extent. Uh, you must be knowing that uh, there are uh, uh, standard uh, encoding techniques uh, which will be encoding with a very high compression ratio. For example, uh, you know the image compression we do with uh, JPEG, GIF format is there, okay, PIG format we say, okay, all these will compress the, the image in the spatial uh, uh, area. But when it comes to the, the video, we use the MPEG. MPEG stands for Motion Picture Experts Group. So this is one of the, the encoding technique where both spatial and the, the temporal uh, compression is done and hence it is going to be more effective. So there are a uh, uh, variety of uh, video uh, encoding uh, uh, techniques are there. Uh, one we basically called as CBR. CBR means Constant Bit Rate uh, Video Encoding. It means that the bits will be generated constantly. Okay, so it's very difficult to achieve, but uh, so this is the one which will ensure more quality of service. Okay, so in the constant bit rate, what happens is the bits that are generated from the video will be uh, uh, gen uh, generated at a very constant rate. For example, uh, 50 kbps, 50 kilobits per second, or otherwise, uh, one Mbps, one megabits per second. That could be the constant rate. But more oftenly, it is a possibility that the bit generation will be variable and hence we use variable bit uh, rate. Here, the amount of spatial and uh, temporal uh, coding changes are more. Okay, for example, uh, uh, you might have seen the, the joggers uh, 
video jogger video means a person who is jogging uh, in front of the, the uh, background nature will make lot of changes the background is also changing and also he is moving from one point to another point obviously a big changes in the uh, what the each frame will can be captured one frame to the another frame there will be a, a great change so this change is supposed to be encoded that's the reason uh, the change is not constant it will vary from one frame to another frame and hence variable bit rate is essential some of the, the uh, standard uh, techniques of encoding are uh, uh, highlighted here the mpeg 1 there are different versions of mpeg there uh, as i told mpeg stands for uh, motion picture experts group the mpeg 1 is the, the earlier version uh, where it was using it for the, the cd rom uh, compact disk uh, read only memory which will be generating the, the bit rate of 1.5 megabits per second later we have come out with uh, mpeg 2 uh, i think dvd has come into picture uh, digital was style uh, disk where up to 6 mbps uh, we can able to uh, generate the, the bits later we have uh, i think even today we are using uh, more oftenly mpeg 4 of course mpeg 5 has come but mpeg 4 uh, remains to be the the most uh, standard here uh, uh, it can be used in the, the internet and uh, which can go up to 1 mbps so these are some of the, the techniques that are being used to uh, capture the, the video now coming to the the different applications of uh, multimedia uh, the first one is uh, streaming uh, uh, the audio and video uh, i think you must be knowing that uh, uh, there are some standard uh, 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 storing uh, agents or agencies are there for example you have seen youtube you have seen netflix hulu and amazon prime like that so where they maintain the videos and uh, in the in their uh, server only okay what we do is we will be streaming it as and when it is required there are two ways of streaming one is live streaming another one is store streaming uh, if you look at the, the store streaming, uh, you see that this is uh, the streaming uh, can begin the, the play out before uh, downloading the entire file. <clears throat> it means that uh, it will be downloading the, the file and uh, parallelly it will be play it, playing it back. Okay, that is one way. The other way is we download the, the complete image uh, video and then we will play back. So in that case, it is very easy when, where you will uh, store it and then you will play it back because once you store, playing it back will be very smooth without any buffering. So buffering is one of the, the major problem in the live streaming. You can see that uh, uh, the stored uh, uh, videos can transmit faster than the uh, that is being rendered in the, the uh, client side where it is buffered. So these are some of the examples. So the other one is a conversational uh, uh, voice video over IP. I think most of you are uh, very much familiar with the, the Skype. Nowadays, we have uh, the other applications rather than Skype. Uh, you might have heard about the, uh, due to this uh, pandemic uh, uh, situation uh, uh, and lockdown case, we have uh, evolved with lot many applications you have Zoom application, you have Microsoft Teams, we have Cisco, WebEx, uh, uh, like uh, oh, oh, Joho is also there, like that many applications have been evolved. So these are all used as conversational voice and video over the internet protocol. So here there is an interaction of uh, different people is possible where uh, the tolerance of delay is very much limited because i am speaking to you you can you should immediately resume my uh, video and audio and uh, so you, you will be responding to it and i should also read it in the real time okay so it is more often it is a, a real time communication Okay, so in the, in that case, obviously the video is support, audio video has to be transmitted at a, a real time, which is again a challenge for us. 
and the third one is live streaming i think you must be knowing that whenever a cricket match or a football match is going on uh, then uh, then you will be uh, watching it live it means that what is uh, happening on the other side can be viewed here on live so here also streaming is very very difficult because so whatever is happening is supposed to be uh, uh, telecasted immediately and if there is any delay that leads to so much of inconvenience for the the receiver so it is the the third way where uh, uh, the protocols the technology that is being used to make the, the transmission of such a video audio is supposed to be very very important and uh, here the quality of service plays a very very important role what is meant by quality of service the what we are receiving the, the video should be able to be conveniently watched by an audience okay so there should not be any buffering there should not be any delay in uh, displaying the the frames of the, the video there should not be any break in the audio then we say it is a good quality video so in order to maintain the quality of service we used to use different techniques and also protocols for that however it is not the, the part of discussion in this so let us not discuss much on that right then uh, i will stop here in the next class we will be discussing in detail the technology that is being used for the streaming of stored video okay right then thank you thanks for joining